Welcome to Teaching Artistry with Courtney J. Body. That's me. This is a podcast that celebrates artists and advocates for community engagement. And like you, I'm home. I'm in home and really looking to connect. And so I've been really, really enjoying having launched this video series of the podcast called Keep Making Art. And in this, I'm chatting with people who are making and sharing art uh, and then, oh, and or, you know, they're helping others to make and share art. And this is in partnership with Creative Generation. Um, if you haven't already, do so now, please go ahead and, uh, you know, subscribe, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're also on all the, all the social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, the Twitter, you know, all those things, enough of that. Okay. So. I'm really excited about, I'm really excited about our guest today. I haven't seen him in forever. And now I get to be a good one and a half feet away from Ty DeFoe. Hi, Ty. Hi. <laughs> Boo to the Jew. <laughs> yes. I'm so, so, so happy and thrilled that you're able to be a guest with us. You know, I have time. Lots of time, <laughs> and especially time for you. Oh, thank you. How, how are you? How are your family doing? Yeah, I'm hanging in there. I'm doing all right, you know. Um, I've been on lots of Zoom calls and artist jams and um, a lot of virtual talking circles in my community. Um, mm. And in the community, there was an elder who was talking about using this time and using the time as a gift which I thought was essential advice. So um, everybody is doing great and sort of in lieu of what's going on, using that gift to create uh, joy and some kind of happiness while at the same time preserving things for others. Um, well, gosh darn it, I love that. And that's, I, I could ask a thousand questions, but I'm not supposed to, so we're going to move on to, and I, I love that. Thank you. Um, so how do you identify as a teacher, uh, sorry, how do you identify as an artist? Yeah, I guess I identify as an artist, as being a, a interdisciplinary hyphenated artist, uh, rooted currently because I spend lots of time with myself due to COVID um, writing but I do a lot of movement work. I do a lot of um, indigenizing spaces work, working in community. Um, and in this way, I definitely identify as a shapeshifter. And do you want to explain what that means? Yeah, yeah. Meaning that um, I'll sort of shift from one space to the other in creating art. And so I kind of look at the project and figure out what is the best medium to tell the story or to get the message across. So I know that because you do work in many different mediums um, and we've been home for now four and a half to five weeks, what have you been able to work on or how have you been sharing your art? Yeah, that's a very good question. <laughs> I feel like I'm like, is it, has it been that long? And, um, yeah, I have been um, doing things like um, writing so much poetry, doing daily drawings, having a virtual talking circles and check-in and the exchange of work. Um, I've been doing other things. I'm, I told someone recently, I'm like, wow, we should all be like um, warrior sort of artists as it relates to what we're creating because it's like you have a, a, a basket and you're filling that basket with all these beautiful gems of inspiration, these things that and offerings to the world. And so that's sort of I, what I feel like I've been doing most recently, been doing a lot of uh, yoga, live yoga classes with all those amazing teachers out there um, and connecting with artists in a new way. So that's something that I've been doing inside um, and also making little animation videos uh, through the All My Relations Collective, this collective of artists that have are dedicated to working with each other and also uplifting messages about the earth. Um, you know, let's take a, a second because I I do think I have one of uh, one of those up. I just you can talk to us about it. I won't play it 
meaning I'll let it play uh, in mute and then you can um, maybe talk us through it. So I'm gonna share my screen. Where, where did I put it? <laughs> uh, so many places it could be. Um, let's, <laughs> this is the fun thing about uh, my life right now because you're gonna see a random thing and then I'm gonna find, oh no, that's not it, oh no. Oh no, <laughs> stop sharing. <laughs> That's not it. You don't need to see that. Oh boy. Oh no. Hold on one second. You um, got this. You, you got showed this. it to me. And it's so good. I love it. Here it is. Uh, mm -hmm. Here it is. I found it. I found it. Yay. Found it. Oh good. <laughs> this is the and the, the treasure burden, as it were, of the fact that this is, I'm the production crew. <laughs> Okay, here is the animation story that you were talking about. There we go. You want to tell us about this? Sure. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, this animation came out of um, an organization that invited me to write something um, for them and do a pieces of art called Trickle Up. And a good friend of mine, Taylor Mack, suggested that, um, you know, I put something together to raise money for some of the relief funds. And so this came out of some things that I was thinking about as it relates to uh, the idea of slowing down and really leaning into that time, really leaning into this filling up the basket, right, by slowing down. And so um, out of that came a poem called The Pathway of a Snail in thinking about life from the snail's perspective and what we can learn from this beautiful creature that sometimes gets overlooked. And so um, here through a collaborative of mine, Kate Freer and some other members from All My Relations Theater Collective, um, we came up with this like entire concept about trying to you know, think about what that would be like and how to make animation when we're all not in the same location and we're, you know, different parts of the city. Um, and so it came out of an experimentation. Um, it's a pretty cool experimentation. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what, what else, what else are you um, wanting to share with us? Because, I mean, we can go through your canon, which, you know, I love. <laughs> But yeah. what would you like well, to share? Well, you know, when you reached out, I, you know, your name came across my email box. And I was like, got so excited that I forgot to reply. And then I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, we we're able to connect. And I was like, wow, this is so cool to get to, you know, showcase a project or a meaningful art piece at this time. And in through conversation with you really thought that I should showcase something um, where it highlights one thing of my greatest desire right now, which is to be outside <laughs> um, and not taking the elements of air for granted, the elements of like living water and the sounds of that, the winged creatures that soar above us. Um, even in New York City, if you have backyards, you're going to Central Park or Prospect Park. Um, you know, some of these beautiful things of life, it's um, so what I'm going to show is a small film that premiered at the San Francisco Dance Film Festival in their um, film selection. And uh, it was a film that was picked out of like thousands of films, which we we're all very excited about it. And this also um, piece came out of a project, a community building project that I was doing in Mount Pleasant, Michigan through Central Michigan University about um, traditional ecological knowledge as well as getting the community to come together to connect around art and the environment. Um, predominantly the Anishinaabe or the Ojibwe uh, peoples who are local to the area whose land that the school was built upon um, and who are just down the road from this school and university and community, folks were able to come together and gather and so we did all these art projects and everything. And this one day, just as the sun was going down, I happened to have um, my wings with me, right? Never leave home without your wings. And um, <laughs> I put them on and ran off into the, out into the woods. And I said, hey, I think um, right now 
this feels like a special moment. Um, we're also with an installation artist, Denise Fanning, that made this um, beautiful nest sculpture. And I said, I'm, I think I need to move in front of this right now. The, the light, that golden hour when it's coming through the trees. And so I put my wings on and went out there. And just as I was um, starting to dance, it began to snow and like two, three people had this camera and we turned the cameras on and we let it roll. And it was, um, all, it's a, an art piece because it's all, m most of the long shots are all one shot. So it was a really beautiful new ritual that I think I've been thinking about lately, even as it relates to staying indoors, but truly, um, you know, a message of hope and peace and embracing two-legged, four-legged winged in the rooted. Um, and it, the film is called Shapeshifter because in human form, how can we continually to change our perspective about how we're viewing and experiencing the world? And this is sort of um, a gift to the river, which is where the film was shot nearby. Let's take a look at Shapeshifter. Yeah. yeah. And here's uh, some, some raw footage for you all. Oops, sorry. <laughs> it's me. <laughs>
is lands where the Anishinaabe homelands are. And also why it's special is because Oftentimes, the languages and the songs were meant to be erased and not remembered and not changed. So by doing this, it's an act of reclaiming the uplifting culture as well. It's a, you know, a film about really thinking about the earth, remembering it, not taking things for granted. So I was able to bring a bunch of artists together to, to work on this. I'm like floored at how utterly beautiful that was. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I it um, you know, when I see it, I'm like, wow, it was just amazing to sort of uplift that moment. You know, it's the moment in real time was so beautiful to share with everyone that was there in that art form, but then to also have it archived mm. as a new form of value, a new form of documentation, you know, and just thinking about the historical context of, you know, indigenous people in the United States, the idea about coming home mm. and what is home and the idea about, you know, transcending self for the greater good of the whole, it sort of reminds me of that. Mm. Um, but it was quite beautiful working with the entire team, like on that project, for sure. Um, and we were able to screen it for folks too, so they could also see how art can function when we're also paying attention to small details. So some of the leaves that you saw were yeah. stitched together by hand, you know, because we wanted some of the frames to be just so, um, mm. you know, so we had to both work with the land and curate it a little bit and then also to fit the art form you know make certain kinds of decisions about what needed to happen as well as allowing the organic nature and power of the piece and dance come through it's just it's so like <sighs> all right before we started recording you and i were talking about this last question, which I think, you know, having watched that piece and you describing the piece and how your, your, your um, ensemble, you know, work together to create that piece, to me that this, this, this question is very much related to it about how artists as a community um, can be activated, can activate themselves um, either to create gifts to share in that basket or to have a, um, a very definitive impact on where I think we are in this moment and how, um, how we need to shape shift, frankly, um, in, in, in a way to, to build a more equitable, positive future for us in this country and and frankly globally and you know they're already starting to talk about it on this like you know political level I think as well as a societal level but I I haven't quite seen folks start talking about the arts and how the arts are actually what's going to help make some of those shifts so that's my question to you is 
either you could talk about the people or you could talk about the art itself. I've been asking this question in various ways all along. So, yeah, you know, but how, how, yeah, how do you think that we can, we as an artist community can actually have influence in positive ways on how we shape the future? Yeah, that, I mean, that's a really great question. Absolutely. And the very thing that it reminds me of, um, is the idea as you also saw the eagle right it's um turning in circles um that nest is built in the shape of a circle right and if you look at sort of the design of the nest for example each one of those small branches or large branches in that nest is needed to make home right so i'm using this as a metaphor to sort of talk a little bit about um, people unifying and coming together and how I'm sort of imagining this happening is that like each one of those branches and sticks matters. They're like, you know, not built on top of the other one or one is lower, but on each sort of um, category of that nest to make the structure. It's like they're all interwoven. They're all interconnected together to create home. And I feel like that is so so important i'm also curious too about what that means as this moment in time is happening but as it passes that and i'm hopeful that we can use this time as a gift so that and take the time to understand like mindfulness in being one of those like branches or sticks in that nest because like you know every nest for example every community is so unique in its function and its design. And I feel like that's, you know, really, really important. The, the mindfulness factor is, I feel like because we are the youngest species, right? We are not more or less than the other species on earth, but I feel as though we are still learning a lot. And this is like a huge lesson. And I've been in vir these virtual talking circles with these elders and, and youth cross-talking some for the first time, which is sort of revolutionary, um, that there are indigenous elders and youth talking together about what's going to happen. The idea about, um, you know, being mindful with each other in, in taking the break to sort of, to find those interwoven connections, find the, the design, you see this design behind me here of the Horido Shoni people, the design so that we can work together as relatives as relations. Yeah. 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 Sorry. I'm, I, <laughs> no, as well. <laughs> no, well, I think that we, there's the symbol of the circle. If I hadn't really thought about this, but like when I look around my apartment, like I have tons of circles, mm -hmm. my, like my, my many, many things, uh, are, I'm very drawn to circles. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and maybe because I I believe in community, I believe in collaboration, I believe in that interconnectedness that you're talking about. That I I feel like past conversations have definitely influenced my with, sorry with you <laughs> have definitely influenced my my way of thinking, my and my way of of behaving, and you know that's that this is. This exactly is why I launched this um, uh, with this investigative query. Yeah. Um, mind. Like I want, I want to be able to inspire. Like that piece is so beautiful and very inspirational and aspirational. I would say, and and this part about the 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 fact that you know where I keep thinking about it is like, artists. We must mobilize, right? But but. <laughs> But what I hear you saying is, you know, we need to actually talk, we need to take the time that we have to talk yeah. it through, to talk in, from an intergenerational perspective. So it's not just, you know, some crazy middle-aged lady like me <laughs> saying, this is what we got to do. Um, but that we're really taking into consideration many different aspects and different mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I used to think like this whole theory about you know, like, and I've often have said, 
um, you know, time is our, our great, time is the greatest colonizer, right? And, and at the same time, during COVID and everything also, I'm like, time is also our, our like greatest, one of our greatest partners too. And how can we partner and create relationship with time and space? which is something that I've been thinking about a lot, both as, you know, an artist and activist in, in the world. Um, in that idea of, of partnering with time, meaning like also taking the time in our like own, <laughs> these own zones that we have in our everyday life, partnering with that time to sort of, you know, even just asking the question of our, our neighbors or our relatives or, or people, I feel like, you know, this time, this hardship is really truly teaching people um, about caring for one another. And that in its simplest form, it's like, how can we care for one another? How can we really listen to one another and not just listen, like, how can we understand one another, like taking to the time to understand. And I feel like from that, so much like source material for artists can be drawn so much material for healing that needs to happen can be drawn um so i think there there's lots of you know good things that can be gleaned out of such you know treacherous things that are happening that's beautiful thank you so much for the advice i i am just staring lovingly and adoringly at you because you're you're i just love you so much i love having conversations with you because um, you make me think and, and feel at the same time, which is not always easy to, you know, unless you're making somebody mad, but that's not how you're <laughs> making me feel. You're making me like sink into my humanity, which I think is wonderful. Uh, same. I love oh. talking to you. I love, love your questions. I love what you're doing. This is incredible. Thank you. Uh, well, Thank you again for sharing your, your beautiful pieces of art and your um, insightful words. And thank you all for watching. And if you haven't already, this is also being recorded for a podcast. So uh, be on the lookout for that. And you know how you do that? You subscribe, subscribe to the SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And always remember to keep making art.